Okay, this is step number one in making sure your cheese turns out. All your equipment must be very, very clean when you milk your cow. Or if you're buying milk from a dairy, ask them how they clean their equipment and if they take it apart um, and clean out all of the crevices. Because a lot of times you'll get milk solids and stuff in here and that it's not bacteria that'll hurt you, but it could contaminate your cheese and it'll ruin your cheese. So, um, notice how this part here goes on top of here, and so we take all of it apart and with brushes clean out all the crevices really well, and we actually do use a two-part chemicals to clean it out. We have a dairy wash, and then we empty out all the water, and we, do, we put an acid in there to break down all the milk solids. Um, so ask your dairy people how they clean their equipment, because it will affect your milk because you want the cleanest milk possible to start with so your cheese turns out. Let's talk about the milk that you're going to use for making cheese. Um, my point of view on this is you want to get the highest quality best milk you can find because if you're going through all the work of making cheese you want it to be something superior than you can buy in the grocery store. So what we're making is an artisanal farmstead cheese so if you don't have your own cow and you're buying your milk um, from a dairy, you want to make sure that the milk is whole milk and you want it to be unhomogenized, which means the cream floats to the top, and you also want it to be unheated. You want it to be raw milk, which is just straight out of the cow. And also, you want to make sure that the, the cows that the milk comes from are grazing on nice pastures during the growing, the, you know, the green growing season during the spring summer and fall. And also um, you want to make sure that the milk comes from animals that are healthy. This is super duper important. You must ask your farmer, do any of the cows have mastitis that this milk comes from? You would think that that would be a question that would be obvious. No they don't, but you would be surprised because it's called somatic cell count. You're allowed to have a certain amount of high is it white blood cells or something in the milk before it's considered, before it's in, not usable for human consumption. And high somatic cell count milk will mess up your cheese. Ask me how I know this. The first cow we had um, had a very high somatic cell count and she got mastitis like six times in her milking lactation and it was terrible. None of my cheeses ended up turning out. It was a very big learning curve for us and the thing is if you have a cow that gets mastitis and it's chronic mastitis you can't use the milk for cheese. It won't turn out. It'll be terrible. So just don't use it. It won't even be worth it. Go to the grocery store and buy your own cheese. Uh, so anyways, this is clean milk. It's from um, a cow that we have that gives us beautiful milk. We also need to talk about uh, how old the milk is. This is also important. So if you're buying your milk from a farmer, try to get milk that's only one day old. So milk that was taken the day before or the day has been milked out the day of. So for me, what that means is for me to be able to make a four gallon amount of cheese, we only milk once a day. So over there is two gallons of milk and that's from yesterday's milking and I'm storing them in glass containers and it was in the refrigerator. So I'll have yesterday's milking and then in there is today's milking. So that's fresh, just milk this morning, and that's from yesterday's. You want to try to avoid using milk that's, I don't know, over a day. I guess you could do it. I've had the cheeses not turn out so good because the milk just starts to, it slowly starts, I don't know. It's better to use as fresh as possible. Your cheese will turn out better. All right, this is step number two when you're ready to make cheese. The morning of, you take all your equipment out. And this is very, very, very important. I didn't do this for the first two years I made cheese, and like one out of 20 cheeses would turn out. You really need to sterilize your equipment, and the best way to do it is a huge pot of boiling water. So this is actually gonna be my cheese vat. So I fill it up with water, and by boiling water in it, you're also cleaning the vat. So you want it all to look clean, and not have any milk solids, no residue, and then you want to put water in it and um, boil it. And boil it for at least 5 to 15 minutes. And then you, I use tongs, take it out. This is my thermometer, very, very, very important. You want to boil, boil the 
the thing too. This is another uh, utensil I used to cut the curd. I think it's just an icing thing. But anyways, all this stuff you want to boil and make sure it gets in the water. All your measuring utensils, and especially your small, um, your small, like, you know, miniature utensils. Like the, this one I got on um, online, it has the miniature sizes, like smidgen and dash, that you'll need for measuring out your cultures. Measuring cup, if you, as much stainless steel as you can find is really preferable to plastic because it'll clean easier. These are my um, propylene followers. I don't put those in there because I think they'll probably melt. Things like this. This is my um, my cheese mold, and it's stainless steel, so that needs to be boiled as well. And what I do is when I'm making breakfast, I usually put all this on the stove and get it boiling. So then um, later on, I'll have it all ready, and I'll be sanitized. So this is the top follower that goes in there and this needs to be sanitized as well as this is what the mold sits on and the whey comes out. And then if you're making um, soft cheeses like camembert, brie, um, munster, you can use these little molds and this is plastic and the best way to sanitize it is with soapy water and then doing um, a bleach solution. Um, I'm going to take the chance and just put it in some hot water and then I'll still do a bleach solution. And there you go. This is a very, very, very important step. I would not, uh, I would not miss this step. Make sure everything is as clean as you possibly can get it because you want your cheeses to turn out. You don't want any foreign bacteria to invade your cheeses and then they turn sour or explode. And Anyways, if it's really, if the cheese turns out really foul, you won't want to eat it because it'll have such a bad smell. But usually, if a cheese messes up, it'll still be editable and it won't hurt you. All right, if you're making a cheese that requires a cheesecloth, you also want to boil the cheesecloth. Um, you can get 100% cotton cheesecloths. Those are great to boil. I have one here that's made, I don't know, I think maybe it's out of plastic, but it's my favorite because it washes really easily and it holds up well, and it also doesn't stick to the cheese when you're unmolding your cheese, and it doesn't leave lint on your cheese. Anyway, so I take it and I put it in the hot water. And careful with this because it'll melt, but um, I just, you know, you do this after you know it's clean of residue, like you've already, you know, soaked it up with hot water and it looks clean. This is just to sanitize it. We need to talk a little bit about equipment. Um, ideally, for home cheese making, you want to buy um, stainless steel equipment or glass, and you want to save that equipment only for cheese making. Don't use it in the kitchen. So buy another whisk, buy another measuring cup, buy another strainer, and it'll be worth it because say you've used it before for sourdough or you've strained some kombucha or Anyways, it's just, it's very easy to cross-contaminate, and it's not, it won't poison you, it won't kill you, but it'll make it so your cheeses don't turn out. So if you really want your cheeses to turn out, just buy all this equipment for cheese making and set it aside and put it in a big Tupperware container and use it only for cheese making. And here's another thing. Um, I don't like bleach, and I never used bleach until I started making cheese. Uh, you need it because vinegar isn't really enough. And so this is just an empty bottle. I fill up with water and I put about a teaspoon or two teaspoons of bleach in there. I think it's probably like about a two liter bottle. And um, that's really important. And then what I do is I spray all the counters down and then I wipe them with paper towels. I wipe the bleach off with paper towels. And then I have um, linens here that I use only for cheese making and when I wash them I keep I use only those linens and I wash them all together for cheese making because there again you don't want cross contamination you don't want to be using your regular kitchen towels for cheese making because you're going to go through all the work of making a four hour to twenty four hour cheese 
you want to give it the best shot you can for it to turn out and sanitation is key. So after you have everything sanitized, I take the water and I pour it into a canner because you want, you'll, be able, you'll want to use this hot water again to heat your cheese up. So buy one of these canners, they're really awesome, very inexpensive. And I like it because the, all the pots I've ever found always fit right inside. And then what you're doing is you're creating a double boiler with the water in there so you won't ever scorch your milk when you're warming it up gently um, for cheese making. So boil your water and then take it and put it in here and then you also have clean water if you ever need to sterilize something that you forgot to sterilize while you're making cheese.